Crews now clearing the site of a standoff that appears to have ended. I'm Lauren Coomer and coming up, we'll bring you the latest details of what we know. A reasonably quiet day out there today with mild temperatures to start this Tuesday morning, but a much bigger fall storm system coming in here for Thursday and beyond. We'll tell you what that's going to bring coming up next. And staffing shortages hitting local schools will have details on why schools are struggling to stay open. From the station with the most local news in our West Michigan, Fox 17 Morning News at 6 starts right now. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Tessa DiTiro. And I'm Rudolph Sanita. We are now on your Tuesday. It is 6 a.m. So let's get your day started with a check at the forecast so you know what to expect. And Kevin, we don't need the winter coats <laughs> just yet. No, it was a perfect day yesterday. Do you guys remember what I said I was going to do yesterday? Ah, something we... in the garage. You are Some... right. It was something in the garage. It took me four hours. I installed a new garage door opener there yesterday. There it is. Oh, okay. Yay. So on Sunday, I got the leaves raked, the grass cut. Yesterday was the garage door opener. I will tell you folks this. That was the best project I have ever done because the instructions were perfect. I didn't have any problem with anything. I used the existing wiring, so everything went well and saved about 300 bucks as well so that went really now I can use the garage door opener get in and out of the garage when it's raining or snowing or whatever the case is so if you guys need a garage door opener it's really easy to install just follow the directions it's, if you're mechanically inclined at all you'll do well good morning everybody welcome to a Tuesday morning we still have dark conditions out there our sunrise not coming up for about another hour and 20 minutes or so here uh, but it is quiet look at our temperatures yesterday perfect day to be outside even in the garage install and some stuff. Temperatures were in the low to mid 60s out there. We'll be a little bit cooler than that today, probably only mid 50s. I don't have anything on radar right now until we pull back to a wider perspective. There's some showers out here. There's a lot of cloud cover over the area, even some patchy fog out there. Most of this day will be dry. I can't rule out a passing shower, a few sprinkles this afternoon into the early evening. Some of us won't see that, but the chance will be there. A 10 mile visibility is a good one. Anything under that is reduced. We have uh, thicker fog down here in cold water at uh, three mile visibility, four mile visibility there in Three Rivers, six mile visibility in Holland. Temperatures mid to upper 40s, as warm as 49 in Grand Rapids and Ionia. It's 50 in Benton Harbor and South Haven. Here's your Tuesday bus stop plan or 7 a.m. We're in the upper 40s, patchy fog, lower 50s at noon with mostly cloudy skies, maybe a shower or sprinkle this afternoon afternoon with highs topping out in the mid 50s a much bigger storm system with wind and rain coming in for Thursday and behind that lake effect rain and snow showers and there could be some minor accumulations a real cold blustery weekend we'll track that system into through and out of the area coming up in my main weather forecast in just a few minutes right now 602 it's time to check traffic here's Rob in Fox 17 traffic, we're looking pretty good. We only have one short delay, and it's on I-94 eastbound to the east of Battle Creek. It's a short delay on eastbound 94 because of a uh, car fire that units are taking care of, and so really small uh, spot that is uh, experiencing a delay on 94. We have the usual volume of traffic this morning, and so going through the construction zone on 94, the road work between uh, Sprinkle Road and Lover's Lane is normal. And you know what? It's going to stay in the current configuration until until January. Now, if you were looking forward to getting things back to normal on that stretch of highway, uh, you're, you're going to be disappointed. However, traffic flow has been pretty good so far, but MDOT has encountered so many holdups due to a bridge redesign, COVID, and delays getting materials that this project ending for this year has been pushed off to January of 2022. Then they'll take a couple of months off and then restart everything up to get the other side of the freeway reconstructed in the spring of 2022. But for now, until January, things stay the same on that part of the freeway. I'm Rob Westerby, Fox 17 Traffic. Happening today, the Michigan Supreme Court is reviewing a case surrounding two black teenagers who were photographed and fingerprinted by Grand Rapids police, but never charged with a crime. The purpose is to find out if their actions violated the Fourth Amendment. The incidents happened in 2011 and 2012. Denicio Johnson was stopped after cutting through the parking lot of a fitness club where there had been some car thefts. In the other case, Kayon Harrison was stopped after handing a model train to someone. He said it was part of a school project. 
suspect. Both Johnson and Harrison were photographed and fingerprinted but weren't charged with any crimes. The lawsuits were filed before a policy change in 2015. GRPD said fingerprints would be taken from people without ID only if their behavior was highly suspicious. Today's hearing is scheduled for 1230. And we're continuing now to follow a standoff in Kalamazoo that's been going on for almost 24 hours. Fox 17's Lauren Coomer has been live there this morning. She joins us live now. Lauren, what is the latest? Yeah, Tessa Ruta, construction crews are now cleaning up the area of the home where a standoff occurred for almost 24 hours. And it appears to have ended, but police have not yet confirmed that. Kalamazoo police were here since yesterday trying to get the suspect out of the home and neighbors tell me he doesn't even live there. Kalamazoo police and fire moved into the home earlier this morning after various efforts to get the suspect out, including negotiations, canines and tear gas. KDPS confirmed multiple gunshots were fired during the incident. This all unfolding early Monday afternoon. Police say they believe the suspect inside the home was involved in a shooting that happened November 1st over on West Ransom Street. In that incident, a woman was shot and is still in critical condition at the hospital. Police have not yet released the suspect's identity. Kalamazoo Fire were also here earlier this morning and were assisting police in entering the home. It is unclear if the suspect has been taken into custody. We have reached out to Kalamazoo Police for updated information, but have not yet heard back. We will continue to bring you updated information as we get that. Reporting live in Kalamazoo, Lauren Coomer, Fox 17 News. All right, Lauren, thank you. Well, starting today, Nuevo Public Schools are closed for an entire week. Students will return to class only next Tuesday, and the superintendent didn't specify why the district is closing, saying in a note to families, there are several factors that go into that decision. Lunches and breakfasts are available for pickup from 1130 to 1230 today, tomorrow and Thursday at Nuevo High School. Now, Nuevo schools are just one of several school closures today. Ludington area schools are closed due to staffing shortages. A decision about the rest of the week will come after staffing levels have been evaluated. Other districts also facing staffing shortages. Just last week, Ottawa Hills High School had to switch to virtual learning due to staffing shortages and COVID cases. Students there will stay remote through Wednesday and return to class in person on Thursday. A similar story for Union City High School students. They'll be learning from home all this week because of a quote concerning level of illness. Elementary and middle school students will continue learning in person this week. Disruptions during the height of the pandemic affected every part of our lives and for teens, those changes have some lasting effects. I spoke with a neurologist at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital who still sees teens presenting that stress in the form of ticks. The phenomenon is being called TikTok ticks. It's a catchy name that grabs your attention, but it's a real life problem causing stress for West Michigan families. And the dysfunction is real in their life. The, the suffering that it causes is real. The suffering that it causes to the patients, the families is real. During the pandemic, Dr. David Moon started seeing an uptick of the same kind of cases in his office. Um, the movements can, you know, be sort of simple movements, meaning like, you know, jerking of the head or the neck or, you know, facial movements. Um, sometimes they can be even, you know, actions where they're hitting themselves, um, you know, or throwing things. Most common in teenage girls, the symptoms are severe and sudden. For pseudotics, I might diagnose it, you know, every other month, you know, once. Um, during the height of the pandemic, there were times when we were diagnosing it three to five times a week. And there was a common denominator. Almost invariably, all of the patients have had exposure to TikTok. Uh, not TikTok to uh, so tick content or providers who purport to have ticks either through Snapchat or TikTok or Facebook or YouTube, um, some kind of social media contact with it. A pseudo tick could be misdiagnosed as Tourette's syndrome, but those ticks are biological and usually diagnosed during early childhood. With therapy, these pseudo ticks can vanish in a matter of months. Most of the children do get better over time, sometimes very quickly once they sort of establish that they understand that, OK, there's nothing wrong with my brain. There's nothing wrong with my nervous system. The TikTok tick phenomenon is not just happening here. The stress response turned physical is rampant across the country. It is an interesting story, you know, because, you know, TikTok and teenagers and you know, tick like behaviors. Um, 
but I think it's just a one manifestation of like a, a broader kind of, it, it's been a tough couple of years for lots and lots of people. So if you see any of those symptoms in your child or your teen, call your pediatrician. Nationally, the Movement Disorder Medical Journal says that it is also seeing more cases of this, while the popularity of tick-related content, especially on TikTok, continues to rise. The process of removing and replacing lead water pipes in Benton Harbor officially underway this morning. Governor Gretchen Whitmer has laid out plans to have all of the city's lead pipes replaced within the next 18 months. The first lead line replaced was removed from beneath Ogden Avenue near Cross Street. Copper lines will replace these lead lines and there were some worries that the replacement wouldn't start until later this week due to a nationwide copper shortage. A Benton Harbor based company was the first to receive a contract from the city to do the work. They'll replace 100 lines by May. The city will be awarding more contracts in the coming weeks so that other construction companies can replace lines simultaneously. What they did here is they fed a cable through the old lead service line. They hooked it up to the, the shovel here and they pulled the new copper line from the hole on that side of the street to pull it under the road, yeah. under the pavement to get the copper line around so they can connect it to the water main. Hopefully they'll be able to use this technique at the majority of homes because it's a lot less disruptive. You don't have to dig up the entire yard. It's a lot more efficient, saves money, saves disturbance in the neighborhood. Crews don't plan on getting to the next few houses until tomorrow due to the nationwide shortage of copper. They have to wait for shipments for this copper to continue their work. All right, your time now is 611 still ahead this morning. The first of two major reports on inflation due out today. That and a historic climate summit that continues today. We have details and top stories that's coming up. Here's a live shot of the downtown area in Holland. Uh, it's a webcam shot there. Quiet conditions out there right now. Temperatures reasonably mild in the 40s, but there's a much bigger fall storm system arriving a bit later this week. We'll track that into and out of the area coming up next. And we at Fox 17 Morning News want to wish a very happy birthday to Liam here, who's seven, and Brian, who is 17. Happy birthday, you two. We want to celebrate your child on the news as well. Just go ahead and send us an email to mornings at fox17online.com. Happy birthday, both of you. Have a great day. stories, the first of two major reports on inflation is due out this morning. The October producer price index expected to show prices rose more than half a percent for sellers last month. A more closely watched report on how much prices rose for buyers will be out tomorrow. And a historic climate summit continues today, a day after former President Obama addressed leaders and advocates. Today is all about how to use science and innovation to achieve big goals. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is leading a delegation of more than 20 Democrats at that summit today. A federal appeals court says it will expedite a ruling on the Biden administration's COVID vaccine mandate for large private employers. The court temporarily blocked the mandate while the court battle plays out. Yesterday, the Biden administration argued the mandate should stay in place during litigation and that shooting it down would endanger thousands. Today, states suing to stop the mandate will file a reply. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a Tuesday morning as we look out over Grand Rapids. We've got mild conditions out there, maybe some patchy areas of fog, but that's about it. And the weather headlines this morning for November 9th. Maybe a shower or a few sprinkles as we head through the afternoon hours. Uh, most of this day will be dry. Some of us may not see anything, but we will have a fair amount of cloud cover around today. Fall storm system arrives on Thursday. We'll start to feel a little bit of the wind from that overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning. The core of the strongest wind speeds will come through Thursday morning and Thursday early to mid-afternoon. Wind sustained at about 20 to 30 miles per hour with some stronger gusts there, about 40 or more. There will be wind and rain. That's for Thursday and then cold and then lake effect rain and snow showers for Friday and beyond. I don't have anything on radar now. We are dry out there. As we look at our temperatures, 49 degrees in Grand Rapids and Ionia. We're 50 in Lansing, 45 up there in Big Rapids. 41 down in Three Rivers in cold water. I think they've got some clearing skies down there. That's why they're a little bit cooler there. 
as we pull out to a little bit wider perspective, there's a fair amount of cloudiness out here and it's all moving our way. It is possible we see a little bit of sunshine through the early morning hours here along with some patchy fog, but uh, the clouds are going to win out today. You can see there's not a whole lot in the way of precipitation with this frontal system. So yes, we could see a couple of light showers or a light shower, a few sprinkles, but that would be about it. A little bit of morning fog possible, otherwise mostly cloudy, a p.m. light shower or sprinkles. Temperatures in the mid 50s today with a northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's what's creating the cloud cover. It's a cold front that's cutting through the area and there's a low pressure system. As we head on through the day, that low will ride along that front. And again, you can see there's a huge lack of moisture with this particular system. So I'm not looking for a lot here if we see anything at all. Eventually that system will be forced off to the south and east, replaced by high pressure. That'll clear our skies tonight and allow our temperatures to drop into the lower 30s tonight. And then by the time we get into tomorrow, I think we'll see partly cloudy to partly sunny skies. Here comes that next big system. It's a fall system. When I say big, I mean really by the scope of things. It will affect several states. And this is Wednesday at 6 p.m. By the time we get into Wednesday night, that system draws a little bit closer and the winds are going to ramp up here and we'll see windy conditions. Certainly by the time we go into Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, the core of the strongest wind speeds will be out there. There's a real good push of mild air out ahead of the system. So we'll make Make a run on Thursday despite the cloud cover and the wind and the rain showers will make a run for temperatures up around 60 degrees and then that cold front will blast on through here. You can see the rain during the afternoon and evening hours. Once that cold front blasts through, the temperatures will start to fall. Look at the snow on the backside of this system. As I said yesterday, we've gone out another 24 hours. This is as far uh, as uh, we can go out with this particular shorter range forecast model 6 p.m. on Thursday. Let's go to the next longer term forecast model. Notice this is the same time frame. The lows a little bit further to the north and east. That's not important. Neither is the location of the cold front. Just know that this system is a huge system by the scope of things and will be impacting us with wind and rain. It still has some rain in here by 6 p.m. on Thursday. But as we go through the animation, lake effect rain and snow showers as that colder air wraps in behind that low for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Look at the snow showers out there. And there could be some accumulations, especially on grassy areas, but it is going to be just cold cold, blustery, and just uh, feeling a lot more like uh, 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 winter time or at least late fall. Uh, you can see this particular system has maybe another clipper system coming in, which could drop additional snowfall amounts as we get into Sunday. How much snowfall are we talking from the GFS model from Friday, Friday night into the day on Saturday? This is through Saturday at 6 p.m. I could see maybe one to two, perhaps two to three inches, especially on vegetation and grassy areas as we get into that time frame. I don't think it'll stick on the pavement through that time frame because that's a little bit warm, but it'll be cold enough to stick on the grass. So maybe watch out for that this weekend for today. Then we got a chance of a shower with mostly cloudy skies, mid 50s there. Partly cloudy to partly sunny skies tomorrow with temperatures in the mid 50s. Thursday, we're talking mainly cloudy skies, windy conditions, and the rain is going to develop, develop as we head through the afternoon hours. Then sharply colder air rushes in behind that. 45 in the morning on Friday, temperatures fall behind that. Lake effect rain and snow showers that continues into Saturday. 42 on Saturday, there may be another clipper system coming in with additional snowfall possible on Sunday, but highs only staying around that 40 degree. Mark. So again, it's going to feel like early winter or certainly late fall by that time. That is our forecast. Let's check traffic. 620. Here's Rob. Fox 17 traffic. We're looking good on the freeways uh, just about everywhere except for one spot, which I've mentioned before. This uh, location of a car fire, which has been put out. Now they're in the latter stages of trying to get that vehicle's uh, wreckage out of there. And the indications are that the, the delay is very short and the slowdown is not that that drastic. You'll get under 30 miles per hour for a few hundred yards, and that's about it. As for everywhere else, we're doing well. Getting through the construction zones, uh, we're doing well in there, too. Uh, continuing today, of course, starting, uh, in fact, it should be barrels out on the eastbound side already on M, uh, or rather, 96 uh, from 36th Street past M6 to Whitneyville Avenue. And uh, we'll anticipate the possibility of a slowdown on the eastbound side. More likely, what will happen is a slowdown on the westbound side, but not until 9 a.m which is when that starts today and throughout the week. And then this will also continue both sides of the freeway on Saturday. And this, of course, will continue in the pattern next week through the 23rd. I'm Rob Westerby, Fox 17 Traffic. Rob, thanks. 621 still ahead this morning. It's a space where entrepreneurs can grow their skills. We're going to take you to Grow Hub in today's We're Open.
Welcome back. Well, during the pandemic, a lot of us found ourselves working from home. So in today's We're Open, we take you to a business that allows people to get out of the house and work safely while they connect with others. Rob Westaby joins us with more. Hi, Rob. Hello, and shared working space is what we're talking about. And support for entrepreneurs. That's what Grow Hub is all about. Now, Grow Hub offers more than a space to sit and work on your laptop. You can look to Grow Hub for real support in making your business happen. I always had an entrepreneurial spirit, but when my job was eliminated in December of 2019, I fell to my knees in brokenness and what am I going to do next? And you know, when I really took a step back and said, like we believe here, everybody has a purpose, everybody has a talent, mine was growth and connection. It's been 50 years since the U.S. Census has recognized females as entrepreneurs. We're better than that. How can we build together to make sure that gap is narrowed and that we're supporting growth right here in Grand Rapids? I started my business prior to coming into the space with Grow Hub. I work with students and organizational leaders and women and girls to find their focus as it relates to personal professional development and leadership workforce training and development. Why not do it in this amazing space right here at Grow Hub? A lot of people have started their business, you know, pre-COVID, during COVID, and now that COVID is over, they're kind of stuck. They don't know where to go from here to grow their businesses. That's what we do right here at Grow Hub. We don't do that alone. You have a support system where you have other individuals that are touch points within the organization to help you as well. So when you're sitting at home, you you have all these records playing in your head of things that you can't do. We're here at Grow Hub to tell you what you can do beyond your limits. Stephanie and I have known each other for a while, and when she was looking for space, I said, I'm looking for space too. When we walked in, we knew it was the right space. So I rent an office here at Grow Hub GR and I am part of the team here that helps people succeed. Grow Hub GR has brought a lot of new people and new connections into my sphere of influence. Those are always valuable, regardless of whether they result in a transaction or not. I hope that other entrepreneurs will join us in our space. All are welcome, and we would love to see some new people join us. Grow Hub is located at 560 5th Street Northwest in Grand Rapids. The website is growhubgr.com with information on the rates for shared working space, even conference rooms, and get this, a podcast studio. Keep up with businesses that are open in West Michigan on our website for fox17online.com slash open. I'm Rob Westaby. Very cool. Podcast studio, too. Mm -hmm. Neat. Time Maybe to start, start our podcast. Right? That's what I was just going to say. We can start a Box 17 Morning News podcast. We got to have Davis on. <laughs> and we'll have to head to their location yeah. to get all the tools. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Rob, for that. 627 still ahead. We've got more news. Your headlines you need to know. Looking live outside here. Nice shot. Kind of a nice morning today to start. A little more mild. Uh, we'll have more on your weather after the break. Now on Fox 17 Morning News, we're continuing to follow a standoff in Kalamazoo that's been ongoing since yesterday. We'll have a live report from the scene. U.S. officials planning a sit-down with Canadian leaders to discuss the Line 5 pipeline, a look back at the 1977 treaty. Plus, AAA has released their travel forecast for Thanksgiving, what they're saying to be prepared for heading for your trip. You're watching Fox 17 Morning News. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Tessa DiTiro. And I'm Rudolph Sonida. Happy Tuesday. It is 630 and a special welcome to those of you joining us on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, all of the other streaming platforms. Welcome to the show. Let's get your day started with a check at the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Craig. Kevin, still looking pretty nice and warm out there today. Yeah, it's not bad. Both today and tomorrow still going to be in the mid 50s. That certainly is not bad by uh, November 9th standards when 50 degrees is the normal high for this time of the year. Good morning, everybody. Here's a live shot over uh, the Grand River in Grand Rapids. The JW Marriott lit on with the uh, uh, blue neon lights and the Amway Grand there. Here's another shot of the traffic moving along. We'll get a traffic report from Rob coming up in just a minute. As we look at live Doppler radar, we are dry. The whole day may not stay that way. Lots of cloud cover today. We have some patchy fog out there this morning. There may be a little bit of filtered sunshine early morning hours, but I think the clouds will win out. 
Now, I can't rule out a shower coming in here as we head through the afternoon hours, but if we see it, it'll be light. It's not going to be prolonged, and some of us may not see anything, but the chance is there. Uh, we are down to a four-mile visibility in Three Rivers, five-mile visibility in Coldwater, six-mile visibility in Holland. Uh, it's not dense fog, but there are some locations with some patchy fog out there. Temperature is pretty mild. Look at this, 49 degrees right now in Grand Rapids and Ionia. Those temperatures have actually been climbing the last couple of hours here. We're 50 in South Haven and Benton Harbor. Battle Creek is 51 this hour. Here's your Tuesday bus stop planner. We're in the upper 40s here at 7 a.m. with patchy fog. Mostly cloudy skies at noon with temperatures in the low 50s. We top out at highs in the mid 50s with a chance of an afternoon shower. This is not a big deal deal here and tomorrow is going to be a nice day. The bigger deal by the scope of things will be a much bigger fall system that arrives in here for Thursday. Lots of wind, maybe some 40 mile per hour wind gusts there. It's going to bring some rain and it is going to force a pattern change that is going to snap us into what feels like winter with even some of the possibility of accumulating lake effect snow by the time we get into the end of the week and the beginning of the weekend. We'll track that system into and through our area. I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking. We'll have the timeline coming up of that system as well so you can plan a Accordingly, that's coming up in the main weather forecast in just a bit. Right now, it's coming up on 633. Time to check traffic. Here's Rob. 517 traffic looking good in general. We have a, a crash on Wilson Avenue at Hall. No indication as to, I believe that is no injuries on it. That's uh, in between Lake Michigan Drive and I-196. Still a little bit early to really cause any kind of a backup, though. On, on southbound Wilson, you can get a backup pretty easily. Meanwhile, on the previous car file I've been, fire I've been reporting on I-94 eastbound after 11 mile, that's been cleared, and so traffic is returning to normal there. What is also normal is delays in construction on the road to construction projects. In Grand Rapids, people have been wondering when the Plymouth Avenue access underneath I-196 will be opened up once again. It was supposed to be opened up by about this time. However, it uh, is, is going to be delayed when it comes to the opening because the bridges are still under construction through December 3rd now. And so Maryland Avenue is your detour. I'm Rob Westerby, Fox 17 Traffic. We're continuing to follow a standoff in Kalamazoo that's been going on for hours. Mm, our Lauren Coomer joins us live now from the scene with the latest on what we know there. Lauren, good morning. Good morning, Tessa Ruta. This area right here is all that's left that's blocked off from a standoff that happened for almost 24 hours. Police have reopened many of the streets following that which appears to have since ended, but police have not yet confirmed. Construction crews were cleaning up the area at the home that has severe damage about an hour ago. Kalamazoo police have been out here since yesterday trying to get that suspect out, and neighbors tell me he doesn't even live there. Kalamazoo police and fire moved into the home earlier this morning after various efforts to get the suspect out, including negotiations, canines, and tear gas. KDPS confirmed multiple gunshots were fired during the incident. This all unfolding early Monday afternoon. Police say they believe the suspect inside the home was involved in a shooting that happened November 1st over on West Ransom Street. In that incident, a woman was shot and is still in critical condition at the hospital. Police have not yet released his identity. Kalamazoo Fire were also here earlier this morning and were assisting police in entering the home. It's unclear if the suspect has been taken into custody. Now, we have reached out to Kalamazoo Police for updated info on the situation, but have not yet heard back. We'll continue to bring you those updates as they become available. For now, I'll send it back to the studio reporting live in Kalamazoo, Lauren Coomer, Fox 17 News. All right, Lauren, thank you for those updates. Well, today the Michigan Supreme Court is reviewing a case surrounding two black teenagers who were photographed and fingerprinted by Grand Rapids Police, but then were never charged with a crime. The purpose is to find out if their actions violated the Fourth Amendment. These incidents happened in 2011 and 2012. Denicio Johnson was stopped after cutting through the parking lot of a fitness club where there had been car thefts. In the other case, Kayon Harrison was stopped after handing a model train to someone which he said was part of a school project. The lawsuits were filed before a policy change in 2015 and GRPD said fingerprints would be taken from people without ID only if their behavior was highly suspicious. Today's hearing is scheduled for 12:30. The process of removing and replacing lead pipes in Benton Harbor is happening this morning. 
Governor Gretchen Whitmer has laid out the plans to have all of the city's lead pipes replaced within the next 18 months. The first lead line was replaced and removed beneath Ogden Avenue near Cross Street. Copper lines will replace the lead. There were worries that replacements wouldn't start until later this week due to a nationwide copper shortage. A Benton Harbor-based company was the first to receive a contract from the city to start the work. They'll replace 100 lines by May. The city will award more, more contracts in the coming weeks so the construction companies can replace these lines simultaneously. And more than $100,000 worth of goods stolen from a marijuana shop. Officers tell us the thieves got in through the roof. The sheriff's office shared these surveillance photos. Take a look. Deputies say the suspects climbed onto the roof of Aim High Meds in Tecancha. They got in the building through the attic, removing part of the ceiling with tools. Investigators believe there are at least two suspects, maybe three. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. Rapper Travis Scott promised to pay for the funerals of those killed at his Astro World concert over the weekend. A crowd surge at that concert killed eight and hurt hundreds more. Funds to help those families already appearing all over social media. Scott released a statement saying he's absolutely devastated by what took place. A spokesperson for Scott said he's cooperating with investigators to figure out what happened and, con and to connect with the families of the victims. Scott faces multiple lawsuits from fans who accuse him of not doing enough to protect those at the concert. The White House now says the U.S. and Canada will talk about the future of Enbridge's Line 5. Last month, Canada invoked a 1977 treaty to ask for negotiations about that oil line. The governor has already ordered the company to shut it down because there's a chance that it could rupture. The company, Enbridge, has refused and says the line is in good shape. And the iconic restaurant in Cascade Township that shut down last year now has a new home. Check out this video. Crews moving Pal's Diner from 28th Street to the Hot Rod Harley Davidson dealership in downtown Muskegon. Now, this isn't the first time the restaurant has pulled up its roots. Pal's used to be called Dan's Diner for a little bit. And before that, it started out life out on the East Coast, calling New Jersey its very first home. The 50s themed diner closed in November of last year due to COVID-19. The Grand Rapids Children's Museum is reopening this week with some changes to their operations. The museum was closed because of a water main break. It reopens Thursday, November the 11th from noon to 7. The museum also announcing new hours and new rules to limit COVID exposure. The public is welcome to visit Thursday through Saturdays. Tuesdays will be members only. There's now a face mask requirement for everyone over two. There are new hand sanitizing stations as well. GRCM.org has more information. And more information is coming out of uh, out of Facebook, who knew a lot about its harmful effects. According to the Wall Street Journal, internal research from Facebook found that one in eight users reported compulsive use of the platform. They said it interfered with sleep, work, and their relationships. While the company banned this as, quote, problematic use, experts refer to this as internet addiction. The journal also says Facebook had a team that focused on user well-being, but they shut that team down in 2019. Facebook's new New parent company Meta said in a blog post that the reports misrepresented their research. New this morning, AAA has released its Thanksgiving travel forecast. And this year, no surprise, they're saying be prepared for some jam-packed airports and roads. 53.4 million people are expected to travel for the Thanksgiving holiday, and that's up 13% from last year, which isn't a complete shock after many people stayed home due to the pandemic last year. Air travel is expected to almost completely rebound this year after dramatic last year. When it comes to travel, people are thinking warmer weather. The top three places people are going, Orlando, Anaheim, and Dallas, Fort Worth. That doesn't surprise me too mm. much. Orlando's a hot Thanksgiving spot. You and my parents are flying over to Florida for the holidays. Are they really? They just want the warmth. Mm. It'll be chilly here, I could tell. I like to be home for the holidays, yes. even if it's chilly. Nothing better. Yeah. 641, still ahead. Macy's making sure their workers still have a very, very Merry Christmas. How much they're raising their minimum wage, along with another new benefit after the break.
Let's take a look at today's top national stories. The FBA is now part of a criminal probe into what exactly happened at Travis Scott's Astroworld Festival over the weekend. Eight people died there, many more were hurt when a packed crowd surged towards the stage. The Houston Chronicle reports at least 36 lawsuits related to the incident have already been filed. The January 6th committee has subpoenaed six of former President Trump's associates. The group wants to know more about the role that those six played on the de that day. The subpoena will compel the six to testify and provide documents to the committee. Pfizer says it will ask the FDA to authorize their COVID boosters for use in all adults as soon as today. The Washington Post first reported the apparent plans, though, though Pfizer did not comment. Boosters are already authorized for people in higher risk groups who were fully vaccinated at least six months ago. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a Tuesday morning. It is straight up 645. We're going to start with radar this time around. There may be a few sprinkles or enough of a rain shower across our northern counties here to just wet the pavement down, and that's all that I have on radar right now as we look at a little bit wider perspective. There's a lot of cloud cover out there, and there's lift in the atmosphere, so we may squeeze out a few more rain showers we may see develop here over the next few hours that aren't uh, showing up right now. We're only looking at the possibility of maybe a rain shower, a passing light shower, few sprinkles all we're really looking at today not a whole lot to going on other than that temperatures still reasonably mild we'll be in the mid 50s today we're 45 in white cloud 44 in fremont grand rapids is 49 degrees uh, same thing over there in ionia and clarksville we're 48 in Allegan, 49 on the north side of kalamazoo 51 in battle creek and we're in the low to mid 40s there across our southern counties as cold as 40 in cold water probably got more clear skies down there would be my thought here as we look at our forecast for today there is some patchy fog out there, but that's not widespread, nor is it dense. Otherwise, mostly cloudy today. PM light shower for you sprinkles, maybe a couple of sprinkles or a light shower across our northern counties this morning. Temperatures 54 degrees for the high with a northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. This cloud cover and the rain, or at least the chance thereof, being generated by this big blue line. It's a cold front. There's a low pressure system that will ride along that front. But by the time we get into the dinner hour, I think a lot of that is going to be pressing off to the south and east. High pressure will build in here. That should clear our skies out overnight and allow our temperatures to drop into the lower 30s. For tomorrow, well, we're talking partly cloudy to partly sunny skies. You can already see the rain coming in with that next system. This is uh, Wednesday p.m. It's not going to be in our area yet, but as we go through the overnight hours on Wednesday, we're going to see the wind start to ramp up here. I can't rule out a passing shower Wednesday night into Thursday, but the winds really ramp up here for uh, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. There'll be some rain showers along this cold front that moved through here Thursday afternoon. And then behind that, the colder air starts to move in, certainly by Thursday night and Friday, cold enough for maybe some lake effect rain and snow showers. Let's go through the forecast for today and our Tuesday. Uh, mostly cloudy skies with a chance of a shower and temperatures around the mid 50s. For tomorrow, well, we've got partly cloudy to partly sunny skies with temperatures in the mid 50s there as well. And then I want to look at the wind forecast. We won't feel much wind during the day on Wednesday, but Wednesday night, the winds are going to start to ramp up. This is a perfect example of it. At 6 p.m. on Wednesday, the winds are no big deal, but watch the colors start to ramp up and these numbers. Those are wind speeds in miles per hour, and those wind speeds will start to ramp up as we go through the overnight hours into Thursday morning with a 10 to 20 mile per hour winds. They'll get even stronger. Those G numbers are the gust numbers. So by the time we go to around noon on Thursday, look at the colors on the map. Those are the strongest wind speeds sustained at about 20 to 30 miles per hour with gust up around 40 or higher. The model doesn't exactly show that because sometimes a lot of times in fact these models have a tendency to underestimate that but know that we are looking at windy conditions for Thursday especially by the time we get into the day on Thursday we're talking about uh, rain developing with the windy conditions but it'll be mild temperatures up almost around 60 degrees and then by the time we get into Friday rain snow falling temperatures here uh, in fact by the time we get into Friday we are talking about a timeline here that is going to be uh, on the order of uh, colder temperatures and maybe some lake effect snow showers you could see that great big trough and these colors represent the air masses so by the time we get into uh, Friday Saturday Sunday well what we're going to be seeing is basically the colder air that's going to be in here and the lake effect rain and snow showers for both Saturday 
Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with temperatures only in the upper 30s to around the 40 degree mark by that time. So that's where we're going here over the next several days. That is a look at your weather forecast coming up on 649. Let's talk traffic. Here's Rob. In Fox 17 traffic, uh, aside from the construction zones we're dealing with, the general conditions are very good this morning once again. Nice dry pavement and uh, uh, normal speeds. No unforeseen circumstances except the possibility you might get slowed down on uh, Wilson Avenue at Hall. There's a scene of a crash there. No injuries. Uh, I'm also not picking up any speed data that any indicates uh, delay. So we're good to go there. Along 94, the same story. Good to go and at full speed. Switching over to Ionia County, I-96 westbound. You're going to have a lane close closure and probable delays when it gets pushed out again. The uh, barrels will be pushed out at 8 a.m. on westbound 96 at Sunfield Highway, and this will go through uh, to the Saranac rest area, and this has been extended through tomorrow, and who knows if it might not get extended again. However, the weather's been good enough, so the crews have been able to get some work done. I'm Rob Westerby, Fox 17 Traffic. All right, Rob, thank you. Well, some bad news for those of us who don't have the greatest sleeping schedules, the time you go to sleep could actually impact your risk for heart disease. A new study published in the European Heart Journal tracked 88,000 adults for about six years, and researchers found the best time to go to bed every night was between 10 and 11. Those who fell asleep between 11 and midnight showed a 12% higher risk of developing heart disease. Those who went to bed after midnight faced a 25% higher risk. Going to bed earlier also showed an increased risk. Participants who fell asleep before 10, well, they showed a 24% higher risk of heart disease. The study shows how disrupting the body clock can impact a person's health. Well, we are in trouble, Tessa. Mm, we are in deep <laughs> trouble. We go to bed way before then, but hopefully we'll be okay. All right, well, Walmart making strides with their autonomous delivery service. The retail giant and its partner, Gaddick, says its driverless delivery trucks have successfully been on the road without a safety driver. This comes after the tech was approved to hit the road on its own in December of 2020. The driverless vehicle has reportedly been driving on daily seven mile delivery routes. The routes include intersections, traffic lights and emerging onto packed city roads. Company leaders claim driverless delivery could save upwards of 30% on logistics costs. I can imagine looking up at the truck like, where's the driver? Where are you? <laughs> All right, Macy's is making this holiday season merry and bright for its employees, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. The retail chain is trying to show its more than 100,000 employees some appreciation during the current labor shortage. They're raising the company wide minimum wage to 15. Macy's also announced plans to commit $35 million on a debt free education program for their U.S. employees. Macy's decision comes as more and more companies work harder to show appreciation for their workers through raises and benefit programs. Very good. Great All right, news. time now is 6.52 and still ahead. Sometimes it can be very beneficial to listen to your spouse. Oh my, what one man discovered when he listened to his wife when she kept bothering him about a lotto ticket. We've got this story after the break. Welcome back. Well, next year's Tulip Time has a special treat for those country music fans out there. That's right. Country music star Chase Bryant will be the final musical act of the festival. That is on May the 14th. Bryant recently released his first full-length album called Upbringing. He's toured with country superstars Brantley Gilbert and Tim McGraw. The performance will be at the Holland Civic Center. Tickets go on sale tomorrow. You can purchase them in person at the festival's box office or online. Tulip Time runs from May the 7th through the 15th, 2022. And if it wasn't enough enticement to go out there and see the tulips, that's another great reason to go. All those Very West excited. Michigan music fans better show up. Yeah. Well, one Missouri man will surely never again question his wife. This story is just amazing. <laughs> so this man purchased a lotto ticket during a recent drive home. It's all because his wife had persistently asked him to buy one. The annoyed husband who just wanted to go home, watch some football. Well, he decided to make his wife happy and did what she wanted to do. Well, that lotto ticket ended up matching all six numbers in the October 23rd drawing, adding up to a $2.4 million payout. 
Of course, not everyone will be so lucky. As experts say, your chances of hitting it big are one in over three and a half million. But this husband will never hear the end of that one, right? <laughs> That's right. You got a happy wife, happy life, right? What will she get from that? A new, a new vacation? Oh, a absolutely. Because that's all on her. He was just going to go home right. watch some football. Maybe your dream new handbag. Purse. Yeah, right? <laughs> Everything you could want. All right, time now is 6.56. We'll be back after this quick break for your 7 o'clock news.